Hodgkin's lymphoma, I think, is one of the most interesting diseases that we treat because um, this is really uh, a great example in the world of cancer medicine how uh, we've seen the development of two issues. So firstly, there's a group of patients that will have a very high cure rate with standard therapy, and that's, again, in North America, typically a four-drug treatment called ABVD. And the concerns in those, treat in those patients are how we continue to maintain very good cure rates while we try to minimize the possibility of acute side effects and as well long-term treatment effects such as the risk of second cancers and other complications such as heart disease. Um, in contrast, there's another group of patients, those typically with more advanced disease, where improving outcomes with the disease uh, still remain important, so increasing cure rates um, but at the same time, this understanding that we need to be cautious in terms of l maintaining uh, a concern for late effects, things again like second cancers and, and other risks like heart disease that we must continue to play out in both ways. So the approach to how we look at Hodgkin's lymphoma is largely based on risk. And the risk can be defined very simply, just based on stage. And so again, historically in North America, we would think of two groups, patients who had what we call limited stage or localized disease. So this is typically stage one or two. So this is one or two sites of disease. Patients without very big lymph node masses, so certainly things that are smaller than 10 centimeters. And usually people that don't have signs of having a lot of lymphoma on board. So people who have not had what we call B symptoms. So no unexplained weight loss, no drenching fevers, no recurring night sweats. So in that group of patients, we know that typically briefer courses of chemotherapy, potentially between two to four cycles of ABVD, is very appropriate and associated with a very, cure rate, a very good cure rate. Um, similarly, historically, this was the group of patients where we would often rely on radiation as part of a combined treatment package with chemotherapy followed by radiation. But as we've learned more about late effects and there have been increasing concerns about these, even though radiation techniques have, involved, have evolved, um, both clinicians and patients, I think, have started to emphasize more of a discussion about tr uh, trying to understand the trade-offs of uh, the use of radiation and potentially balancing that with um, potentially higher rates of relapse that may be still seen and balancing that with the risk of second cancer or, or accelerated heart disease that you may see with the application of radiation. In contrast, the patients that have more disease on board, so those are people with larger masses, um, people with those symptoms of fever, night sweats, weight loss, and those people with stage three or four disease are those that are generally treated with uh, longer applications of chemotherapy, so that's typically six or even eight cycles of ABVD. And again, in Europe, this is where, uh, particularly in Germany, they had pioneered the development of a regimen called escalated Biocop, and so that's something, again, that uh, can be considered in patients with higher risk, though largely has not caught on because there are some concerns with toxicities with the regimen. So again, are all Hodgkin's lymphoma patients treated the same? Uh, certainly not, and a lot of it is based on the risk uh, profile in terms of the amount of disease, and that will often dictate the treatment approach.